Christians also. So we need to be prepared uh, to stand for the Lord, you know, regardless uh, of uh, what the situation is. Uh, if you have decided to follow Jesus, uh, you need to stand on that ground, a uh, firm ground, and know who you are is a Christian. Hallelujah. Praise God. And be prepared whatever the enemy might try to throw at you. Uh, God said in his words, they're going to be trials and tribulations, but don't worry about that. He's overcome every bit of it uh, because when he went to the cross, hallelujah, guess what? He died. He shed the innocent blood for you and I, and praise God, we got the victory. I'm here to tell you uh, this morning, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. So if you got your Bibles, you want to uh, follow with me uh, this morning, let's just look. Uh, uh, let me get to one of them buttons again. I want to look uh, bold as a lion. Can you be bold as a lion this morning? Because God is on the move. And our Lord Jesus was bold as a lion, and we need to be bold as a lion too. So we're going to look this morning uh, and just see what the Lord has for us uh, uh, to stand our ground with him. You know, uh, when you decide to follow Jesus, hallelujah, praise God, no matter what's going on around you, you've got to stand. You know, the enemy may be around you everywhere. People of this world is not a believer uh, following the Lord. Things may come up, but you still got to stand your ground, you know, uh, regardless of what it is. Uh, if you decided uh, God said to pray for your food, you need to pray for it, uh, regardless of who is around. That shows who you are as a Christian, amen. It might be in a public place or at your home or wherever it might be, but you got to stand bold for the Lord regardless. <clears throat> and guess what? This is a scripture I always stand on. He said he'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us, praise God. So we got to look at that. So let's look this morning. We'll get into uh, what the Lord has in Proverbs 28. Uh, this is where the Lord started showing me uh, what to minister on uh, this particular message. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. When you decided to follow Jesus, uh, you got a boldness like you never had before. You got a boldness that you'll talk to other people about Jesus because you want to share your testimony with those people and let it uh, uh, flow over into them. Amen. You know, one of the strongest things you have as a Christian is your testimony. And what is that? What did God do, do, do to you? You was living this life, but praise God, I know I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I know that I'm righteous before Almighty God, and I got something to be bold about because my Father owns everything anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's look a little bit. You know, listen, uh, the wicked, uh, they may appear to be bold. Uh, they might at sometimes be bold in what they're doing or what's going on. And I know I've been, uh, I run that wicked life years ago until God got a hold of me about 26, 27 years ago. And I truly got the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord in my heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I used to run that wicked life. But I'm telling you right now, because of Jesus and who he is, hallelujah, he radically changed my life. So if you get saved and on fire for the Lord, you'll see your lifestyle radically, radically change. Amen. <clears throat> and that's a testimony to the world because the doctors, physicians, the psychiatrists, they can't do that for you. Only God can do that for you. Amen. So that's what we got to look at. Look at right here. You know, the, uh, you know, when they run in, uh, doing those evil things out there and everything, uh, they're bold and everything until uh, they uh, come face to Almighty God. And they're going to have a fear that you can't imagine. Uh, I used to have it, but praise God. But God, uh, when I got a hold of him, hallelujah, praise God, he did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, hallelujah. And we got to hold on to that this morning because of who he is, hallelujah, praise God. Let's go a little bit further and look. Uh, I want to talk about some men uh, some some generals in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, when I say generals, uh, they all up way up there in their spiritual walk with the Lord uh, where I want to get. Uh, I want to go past them, but these generals I'm fixing to talk about in the Bible, buddy, they've been there and done some of the things because God's Word writes and tells about them. Amen? Let's look right here, and we're going to talk about uh, Elisha a little bit. You know, Oh, Elisha, you know, he challenged uh, Ahab. He told, oh, Ahab, you know, there's some bad things going on and you had all these uh, uh, 
Balaam worshipers running around there and they was worshiping in the groves and doing all that stuff and they were coming against God and oh Elisha uh, and God had enough of it and oh Elisha told Ahab you get the people you get you Baal worshipers down here and I'll challenge you I'll challenge you with my God and we'll see who your God is now is that a bold statement to stand before all of those people and say hey I'm going to tell you my God is a true living God and your God ain't. I challenge you. <coughs> Excuse me. That's an awesome challenge, isn't it? But old Elijah was bold enough in his walk with the Lord. He knew who God was. Elisha did 16 miracles. Elisha did 32 miracles. But old Elisha, he called old Ahab and said, get all you, you people down here. We're going to have a little contest down here. We're going to see who God is. Is that bold or what? Let's look and just see a couple of scriptures uh, about uh, uh, in 1 Kings 18, 15, 16. I couldn't go through the whole thing, but old Elijah told him, said, you get, you get your Baal worshipers down here, and this is what I want you to do. I, I want you to start crying out to your gods, and I want you to scream and shout. There's 400 and something of them, by the way. He said, I want you to scream and shout to, to your God and get him to bring fire down from heaven and uh, we'll see if your God is God or my God is God. So, you know, they, them, them Baal worshipers, they started screaming and hollering uh, to, their, to their gods, uh, which is dead gods, by the way. Don't answer prayer, none of this. And they screamed and hollered. And old Elijah, he started gouging them a little bit. <laughs> Boy, he had a bow in his short enough. He said, well, maybe he's asleep. Uh, holler a little bit louder. Or maybe he's uh, gone on a trip. Uh, or maybe he can't hear you right now. He started gouging them a little bit. And then Baal worshippers started cutting their arms and wrists and everything, crying out to their God, and nothing happened. Is that a bonus or what? And then old Elijah, let me tell you what he done. <clears throat> he told him, said, I want you to, I'm going to make an altar to God right here and put the wood out there on it and everything. And said, uh, I, I want you to pour 12 barrels of water on it. I want it soaking, good and soaking. I want you to dig a trench around it, and I want you to pour 12 barrels. I want that water to be there so there's no way no fire can be there, you know. I want it to be done like that because my God's going to consume it because uh, I serve the true God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And uh, so oh, Elijah was so bold. And he started mocking them old Balaam worshipers again. Well, you need to call louder. Your God, he must be asleep. Let me show you right here what old Elijah. I'm going to go give you just a little bit of this right here. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Now, I'm not going to go uh, into uh, some of the other scriptures here with Elijah, but I'm going to tell you what happened. Uh, the Balaam people did all their thing and their God didn't answer. Their God didn't bring fire down from heaven and do nothing. They cut themselves, they screamed, they hollered. And oh, well, Elijah called out. You know what happened? Uh, uh, oh, Elijah called out and, and he asked God, said, God, to uh, bring fire down and consume this altar right here. And guess what? Almighty God heard Elijah because Elijah was a man of God and Elisha loved God and he was showing that bonus. He stepped out in front of all them other people that was against him and said, this is my God and I want to prove him to you. And praise God to, God brought fire down from heaven and praise God, it consumed that altar and all the water and everything and it was gone. And all the people that came down there uh, to the, uh, the, uh, where they was at seen that Elisha's God was a true God, amen? And when that happened, praise God, oh, Elisha, uh, there's a penalty for sin, by the way. There's a penalty for wor uh, worshiping other gods, amen? So Elisha, let me tell you what he done. He told him, said, I want you to take all them Baal worshipers, 400 and something of them, down the creek down here, and I want you to slay every one of them. Boy, they paid the price, didn't they? They followed the wrong God. But praise God for a man like Elisha. Elisha was bold and stood up before the Lord. And he did it where he would lose his life or not. He stood up before God and said, this is the way it's going to be. I serve a true risen God, and I'm going to show you. And God showed him, didn't he? Was that a bonus or what? That's an awesome thing. Praise God. Look here. Oh, I like it. Fire from heaven. Now, I want to tell you about another man that's powerful. In the book of Exodus, we're going to look right here. I like this one right here. It's our brother. I'm going to get to talk to him too one day when I'm in heaven. Praise God. I'm going to be with him. Let me tell you. It's our brother Moses. Now, Moses was bold too, wasn't he? You know, Moses went up on the mountain, and he was up there 40 days, and he's getting the Ten Commandments from God. He didn't eat. 
all that. He was up there worshiping God and, and writing the Ten Commandments that God was giving him, you know. God gave him uh, uh, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, you know. But all the people, after they, the Egyptian, I mean, the Egyptian let them go. The Hebrews went across uh, uh, the Red Sea. They seen all those supernatural miracles that God did. It didn't take them but uh, 40 days to lose sight of who the true living God was. You see it? Well, let me tell you. They was down there in the camp, uh, and uh, they ran over to Aaron, and they told Aaron, which was Moses' his brother, who knew better. And they told Aaron, said, you make us a God. We want to worship a God and take it with us because we don't know where Moses is at and what's going on. We got to move on. So old Aaron said, okay, take off your gold earrings and all that and give it to me. And they did, and what happened? They built a golden calf, and the golden calf was down there, and they were running around naked worshiping it and doing all kinds of things. <clears throat> but here comes a man of God off of Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments in his hand. And he's a man of God, and he's bold, by the way. He come down there, and he looked, and he seen that calf, and he went up against all them people that was worshiping that calf. And he said, you take that calf, and you burn it. And he burnt uh, uh, that thing down to ashes, and he took the ashes, uh, and he threw them uh, on the brook. Now, I want to tell you. Was he bold or what? He struck out at him, didn't he? He said, you're going against the Lord thy God. It won't be tolerated. And guess what? They had a price and a penalty to pay for that too. Let's see what old Moses did. Boy, he was bold. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing and Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tablets out of his hand and broke them beneath the mount. Look at here. And he took the calf which, he had made, which uh, they had made and he burned it in the fire and ground it to powder and he strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink it. Now let me tell you what happened after that. This is what kind of man of God uh, and the boldness that Moses had. He stood for what he believed because he knew God. He told him, he said, listen, uh, all of those, just like my sister said, you decided to follow Jesus this morning. He said, Moses said, all of those that will follow her, God Almighty, come over here. And all the tribe of the Levites came over there with him and some more. And then uh, Moses told the Levites, uh, those that didn't uh, want to follow God, to go destroy and kill all the others that didn't choose. They chose poorly, and they were killed. They suffered a sacrifice, I mean, a, a, a penalty for their sin right there, worshiping the calf. But I want you to look at the boldness of Moses. He stood his ground, didn't he? Praise God. We as Christians got to stand our ground. Amen? We got to stand on our beliefs of who we are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's look at another man. Oh, I'll tell you about the, uh, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who are they? They men that decided uh, with Daniel, hey, we're going to stand for God. And old Nebuchadnezzar, he made a big altar, uh, I mean, a big golden uh, uh, a statue of him, and he told everybody in there, when the trumpet blows, you better bow down and worship that uh, and worship me. And uh, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we ain't doing it. We worship in God. No matter what it calls for, what it takes, we worship in God. So the fury of uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar rose up in his face uh, and he said, get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them in the fire. Make the fire seven times hotter and give me the most strongest men I got to throw them men, them three men in the fire. So he did it. He threw them men in the fire and his strongest men of his army. And the fire was so hot it killed all of those men that threw the three men in the fire. But all of a sudden he looked down in the fire and he said, did we not uh, throw three men in the fire? And they said, yes. And he said, well, I see a fourth in there and he looks like the son of man and he's walking around in there. Hallelujah, praise God. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was down there with our Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, he said, bring them out. And when they brought them out, guess what? Their clothes wasn't even singed. <clears throat> they didn't even smell like smoke. But um, them men were bold for the Lord. Amen. We got to be bold for the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got to do it. Amen. Amen. They came out of that uh, fire 
And just think, it was so hot that the strongest men that uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had to throw them in, it, the heat killed them. But Almighty God was in there with them. Hallelujah, praise God. And they came out uh, not even smelling like smoke. Look at here, a couple of scriptures here. If it so be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if thou, but if not, be not known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now I want to tell you something. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, guess what? They made a decision. They said, hey, if God don't deliver us, we're going to serve him anyway, and we're not bound. In other words, they've presented their life uh, flat out uh, to Nebuchadnezzar. Hey, we'll die for our beliefs. Uh, we got to be able to stand like that, folks, uh, because the times and troubled times that we have out there, <clears throat> people are going to be looking and seeing, hey, are they true Christians or not? Are you true Christian or not? You've got to be bold. You've got to stand your ground because he said he never forsake you and never leave you. He's always there with you. You got to grab a hold of that, amen. You got to grab a hold of it. Look here. Let's go a little bit further right here uh, and see another. I call them great generals. You know. <clears throat> Look here. We see that. Oh, Stephen. What did Stephen do? Uh, no, let's look at Paul. Let's, let's see what Paul did. You know. Paul, the Holy Ghost told Paul, if you go to Rome, there's going to be affliction there. He told him that. The Holy Ghost told him. But old Paul loved the Lord and said, my God's called me to preach the gospel, and I've got to go there anyway. Even if afflictions abideth there, I'm bold. He didn't say I'm bold, but he was bold, wouldn't he? He said, I'm going anyway. And he was warned by the Holy Ghost not to go. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit in Jerusalem, not knowing the things shall befall me there. Save the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. The Holy Ghost told him, but Paul was bold enough to say, I'm going. Paul was bold enough to go in cities and preach the gospel and be lashed and be stoned and be shipwrecked and all in the snake bit. All of those things came up upon him. But Paul was bold enough when he seen Jesus on that Damascus road, he said, I'm going with him. He seen him. He said, I'm going with him. Amen. We got to be bold and stand our ground. Hallelujah. Because you are somebody in Christ. <clears throat> and you have a power and authority. I got to look at another in here. Let's look at old Stephen. Stephen uh, uh, preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, uh, there was dispute against him. They come against him and even Paul held the garments. Saul, Paul, held the garments uh, of uh, our brother Stephen while they stoned him to death. But he was bold. He went down there and he let them stone him to death. Now, this is one thing as I was reading and studying, I looked at this. It always gets with me. When Jesus was on the cross, y'all, he looked down at those people who had done all of those things for our Lord, and he said, Lord, forgive them. And they, don't what, they don't know what they're doing. Can you imagine doing that after what they did to him? Now, let me, let me tell you what else Stephen done. He did the same thing. He knelt down, but the Bible says he fell asleep. But they stoned him to death, and guess what happened? Praise almighty God. He looked up and seen Jesus standing, not sitting at the right hand of the Father. He went to be with the Lord, but look at here. He said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. Is that, is that awesome, God be love? I mean, that's a love. Lord, help me to get there. That's an awesome love, isn't it? But I tell you right now, God's given us uh, the power and authority to be bold for him, and we can do it. No matter who we testify or witness to as we go forward, we can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at uh, Stephen here. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. See, he didn't. So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus uh, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Uh, let me see which one I'm on here. That was Paul. Now we're going into Stephen right here. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them and showed them before the coming of the just one of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. Look at here. And it goes on. 
who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And when they heard these sayings, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. Now, let me tell you, Stephen stood up and told them what the problem is. Sometimes we might have loved ones in our life. Sometimes we might have neighbors or friends. Sometimes you got to tell them in love, listen, you got some problems going on here. And if you don't get it uh, straightened out, if you don't get your heart uh, kind of uh, with the Lord where you're supposed to be, you're going to suffer the consequences. Amen? You're going to suffer if you don't. And sometimes we have to have, tell our loved ones, we have to tell our neighbor or whoever it might be. That's the boldness, isn't it? Sometimes God will tell you to do something you don't want to do. I've been there. But you got to have that boldness to step out. God might tell you, and I'm looking for it. Uh, you know, I, I, me and my wife walk around to the uh, stores sometimes. We get in there, and I'll see somebody in a wheelchair or something going on. I'll say, God, I sure would like to lay hands on them people and then get out of that wheelchair and walk out of here. God's life will say, one day you walking in that uh, grocery store or something, go lay hands on that person over here. I'm going to heal them. Woo! Amen? Look at Look what... Uh, it would be to the person uh, that's in the wheelchair if you obey God with a boldness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, a, that's an exciting thing to me. Listen to this right here. And when he heard these sayings were cut to, uh, to the heart and they gnashed on him with the teeth. And, uh, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, uh, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Excuse me. <coughs> then they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their ears. They ran upon him with one accord. They all ganged up on him. How about that? What a group. And they cast him out of the city, and they stoned him, and the witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul, which was changed to Paul. Let's go a little bit further right here. At the, the, they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he said this, he fell asleep. See that statement right there? Stephen was so bold that he even asked God to don't lay that sin to their charge. Can you see that? Is that awesome or what? Is he one of the generals uh, of God's army? I, I believe he is. Amen. Praise God. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Peter and, uh, and John. Peter and John. Let's look right here. A couple of scriptures. Uh, some more boldness. And they called them and commanded them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. What did they say? They come up and told Peter and John, said, listen, you won't be preaching that name Jesus. You can go out there and preach or do anything you want to, but don't mention the name of Jesus. Don't preach about uh, Jesus. We don't want you to do that because you're going to suffer consequences if you do. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God or, or hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot speak the things which we have seen uh, and heard. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go finding nothing they could might punish them with because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Now, uh, Peter and Paul, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Peter and John, they're bold, wouldn't they? They stood up there. They were threatened. They told, uh, they were said not to uh, preach the gospel of Jesus, don't uh, teach it or nothing. But they stood forth and said, we're going to do what God said. We got to do that, folks. We got to do that. Now, I'm going to go to one last one right here. And, and uh, this is an awesome bonus right here. It's our Lord in Matthew uh, 27, 27. I'm going to read one, one verse. Our Lord Jesus, I, I could preach all on this right here, but our Lord Jesus was bold. He went to the cross for you and I with a boldness you can't imagine. He went before Pilate. Uh, uh, he, he was sent to Pilate. And then uh, Jesus was before Pilate. And they were mocking him and scorning him. And the people were hollering, crucify him. Give us Barnabas. Uh, we don't want Jesus. Uh, we want him crucified. Why? Because he was doing signs, wonders, miracles. He was the son of the living God. And the Pharisees and Sadducees and the Sanhedrins uh, couldn't accept that. They thought they were going to lose their jobs. <clears throat> they wanted their lifestyle that they had without Jesus. Can you imagine? But Jesus, our Lord, was bold, wouldn't he? He went. Hallelujah. He went before 
Pilate, hallelujah. And Jesus was condemned. He was innocent. Jesus didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing. He was condemned. He was innocent blood for you and I, but he went because of the boldness, hallelujah. And then he was crowned. They crowned him, y'all, with thorns as the blood run down his uh, uh, face. Uh, and he was scourged, uh, uh, 39 stripes for you and I. That's why, that's why we can claim the blood of Jesus. Uh, that's why we're righteous before God because our God paid all the price for you and I. Hallelujah, praise God. So we can cry out to that. But we, uh, uh, under uh, a responsibility and accountability that we need to do for our almighty God is what? Be bold for our God. Because he was bold all the way to the cross. All the way. He was crowned with scorns. He was scourged before they crucified him. And when they crucified him, guess what? It was finished. They put him in the grave. The third day, just as prophesied, he came out of that grave. It finished it. It took the keys away from the devil, uh, the, the grave, and death was taken back from him because of our Lord, hallelujah, because of his boldness that he stood up for you and I. He did it for you and I, hallelujah, praise God. We got to have a boldness. We're accountable. We got responsibility. When we become a Christian, you got to make a stand. Hey, I stand for the Lord. God changed my life. God saved me. God cleansed me of all those things. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. We got a lot to be uh, thankful for here this morning. And I'm telling you, when the wicked go before the Lord, and I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, God, it's his heart that everybody be saved, but God gave man will, didn't he? Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. You can read and study that little statement right there too. A whole band of soldiers, 600 soldiers, spat on him, put a robe on him. They mocked him. They done all those evil things to our Lord. But he was bold, and he stood the test, and he went forward for you and I. So we got a lot of responsibility uh, this morning to look at. Amen? We got to be bold for the Lord. We got to stand our ground. You got to make up your mind because I'm going to tell you right now, you can't be timid when things come at you. When you're persecuted or something happens, uh, you just got to say, hey, I'm a Christian Ever what uh, uh, comes forth, uh, I'm standing with my Lord. Amen. The Bible says those who endure to the end. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we got to endure to the end. Let me talk to these people right here. Every head bowed, please. Anybody in here uh, does not know Jesus Christ and you want to be saved, raise your hand right now and we'll pray that God will move upon you and uh, you'll say this prayer, you can be saved. Anybody want to rededicate your life? Okay, I'm talking to the internet folks right here. I pray that you heard this message and you want to be bold. Uh, you put the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and you believe in him and you study and read his word. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus, our Lord Jesus, was raised from the dead, was buried, and three days later was raised. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved if you believe. But you got to confess your sins. Guess what? You got sins there. You need to throw your pride off and say, God, come into my heart. And the Lord will come into your heart because he loves you. You know how I know? Because he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And each and every one that will accept him as Lord and Savior you have that, and you can be bold before our king, for our king. Hallelujah. Look the, at the price he paid for you and I. I pray you said that prayer, and if you did, I pray you'll look at the, our uh, internet page. Go up in the right hand and push contact. Say, Pastor Rick, I said that prayer. We want to rejoice with you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Ever head bowed, please. How many in here?